Amen and amen and amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, the mighty God, the ancient of days. Father, we have come to your presence again. We have come to you, Holy Father. For only you that can give life to your children. Father, we have come to receive the life that comes from you. We know that in your presence there is joy, there is a victory, there is grace. In your presence there is mercy, there is the fullness of joy. Father, that we have come to receive tonight in the name of Jesus. Therefore, take over tonight. Let your joy, let your strength, let your mercy visit your children. Father, O oh Lord, in your presence, that is the fullness of joy. Let that joy come, not in half measure, but in fullness, O oh mighty Jesus. Psalm 16, verse 11, what the Bible says, You have known to me the path of life. You have made known to me the path, the way that leads to life. You will fill me with joy in your presence. Father, this is your presence. We are not here in the presence of man. But in your own presence, this is our stronghold, our fortress. We have come to you, Lord. Come and have your way tonight. Come and speak to your children tonight. Come and quicken our hearts, our minds, our spirit, quicken our bones tonight. We have left everything this moment to come and be at your feet like Mary, just listening to you, listening to your word. This is your presence, Lord. In your presence, you dispense blessings. Psalm 21, verse 6. And the Bible says, For you grant him blessings forever. You cheer him with joy in your presence. Woo! In your presence. Father, we need your presence. Let your glory flow tonight. Let the windows of heaven flow tonight. Or even open tonight, O oh Lord. In your presence, heaven opens. Jacob slept in your presence. And he had visions. He had visions of angels descending and ascending. Father, that hour has come. Take away the shame of your children. Because in your presence, shame is taken away. In your presence, your children receive double portion of your blessing for them. You take away humiliation. You bring joy in your presence. Father, that time has come. That moment has come. The moment for which you have said in Isaiah 6, verse 7, instead of shame, my people will have a double portion. And instead of humiliation, they will rejoice in their share. So that they will inherit a double portion in their land. And everlasting joy shall be theirs. This is the moment to fulfill that scripture in your presence. Thank you, mighty Jesus. We hand ourselves over to you. We hand over the message to you. Even the messenger, we hand over to you. Our hearts, we hand over to you. That you may open our hearts and come in. Walk in our hearts. Walk in our hearts. Deal with it. Tender it, O oh Lord. Water it with your blood. Make it ready to absorb, to receive the word that you have for your children tonight. Every obstacle to this message, Father, dethrone their government, dethrone the, their offices, dethrone their powers. For you are the one to be enthroned in the hearts of your children, even through this message. Father, this is not the message of man. This is the message 
of heaven. Father, prove that this is the message of heaven. You are the God who taketh pleasure in your people. Even in Psalm 149 verse 4, it will say, for the Lord takes pleasure in his people. He adorns the afflicted with salvation. Father, let this scripture be fulfilled tonight. Take pleasure in, your, in the praise of your children, in the garden of your children. Adorn the afflicted with salvation. Adorn the afflicted with healing tonight. Many have come with the broken tears. Broken tears. Tears are flowing. Father, come and take over. Come and take over. Forces of darkness are negotiating the life of your children. But Father, cancel their mission. Cancel their agenda. Cancel their enterprise. Let your word stand. For your word must stand forever. Have your way, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, King of Glory. Thank you for coming to redeem us. Thank you for coming to speak to us. Thank you for that river that is flowing from the Holy Sanctuary, from the Heavenly Sanctuary to this fellowship. Thank you for that river. That river is the river of life. The Bible says in Psalm 46 verse 4, there is a river whose streams delight the city of God, the holy place where the Most High dwells. Father, this ministry has a motto, the city of Jesus and Mary. Hearts of Jesus and Mary ministries. The city of Jesus and Mary. In that city, there is a river. A river whose streams delight the city of God. Father, let that river flow. That, let that river turn every desert into a, a life, a, 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 a land with pasture. Father, your altar is ready to bless your children. Therefore, bless your children. Blessed be your name, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Amen, my amen. My dear friends, with great pleasure, I welcome every one of us to the heart of Jesus and Mary Ministries. Today, we continue our journey with the mother of Jesus. A journey with which she is leading us to Jesus. If you consider that Mary is pregnant and uh, pregnant of Jesus and uh, she is without this journey, that means that that both Mary and Jesus are with us in this journey, in this spiritual journey. I like to think of the episode of Mary and Joseph going to Bethlehem. But Mary was pregnant of Jesus. In our own journey, like Joseph, Mary is with us. Jesus is with us. And today, my dear friends, I have the pleasure to share the very gospel of Jesus with us from John chapter 2, verse 5. John chapter number 2, verse 5. And the Bible says, and I'm going to be reading from the New Revised the Standard Version Catholic Edition. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. And this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to you, Lord Jesus. His mother said to the servants, Do whatever he tells you. 
Ay, ay, ay. He is mot. Who, who are we talking about? Who is the script talking about? Who has that he is? Who is the he is? His mother. That is Jesus. His mother is Mary. So Mary said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. As a matter of fact, Mary is here telling us, listen, 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 do whatever he tells you. That means that Jesus has something to tell us. That means that Jesus speaks. He ministers to us. Many a time, we do not hear him. Or we hear him wrongly. When we become so busy in this world, we go through life not hearing the Lord who speaks. Because he does speak. He speaks to his children. And Mary, the mother of Jesus, knows that her son speaks. Not spoke. What are talking about yesterday? What are talking about? Something continuous. Something that's present continuous. He speaks. It speaks. Our ears, most of the time, do not grab his word. And so tonight, the very woman who carried Jesus in her womb, the very woman who lived with the baby Jesus, who lived with Jesus in, in, the, in, the, in the home, who, who gave the word to Jesus, who lived her life with Jesus, that very woman who knows the life of Jesus very well, Mary, is here to teach us the secret of successful Christian life. And that secret is doing what God tells us to do. <laughs> okay? This is the secret of having the joy of the Lord. The secret of having His peace, His blessings, is to do what He tells us to do. That is what Mary is advocating this night. Okay? <laughs> Do you want your life to be very pleasing to, to him in all things? Did you say yes? Then do whatever he tells you to do. God is talking to all of us. Okay? He's talking to all of us. He's talking to me. Never mind that he's using my voice to speak. He's also speaking to me. He's telling me, oh, okay, do whatever God tells you to do. Do what my son tells you to do. Do it. Because when I do it, it will be well with me. Now, do you want it to be well with you? Simple. Do whatever he tells you to do. Do whatever he tells you to do. We have to do what Jesus tells us to do. That is what Mary is saying. She's not talking so much. She just gives us a word. And she wants us to abide by it. Okay? Do, do we want our prayers to be answered? Oh my goodness, who doesn't want his or her prayers to be answered? Then, do whatever he tells you. It seems to me that Mary is asking us so many questions tonight. Do you want your prayers to be answered? Are you seeking fresh and enlarged field of service? Do you need divine guidance? 
And of course, because she hears us say yes, then she tells us, do whatever he tells you. What he tells us may not be what you want, but we ought to listen to him. We ought to listen to him. We ought to, just like Mary, listen to him. Do whatever he tells you to do. Okay? <laughs> and if we would listen to him, we will be filled with the glory of his presence. His presence will be with us. His presence. You see, the other day God sent Jonah on a mission to Nineveh. Okay? When God sends us, sends us on assignment, His presence will be with us so that we accomplish His mission. I like the way Moses puts it in Exodus, uh, I suppose, chapter 33, verse 15. He said, Lord, we shall not go if your, if your presence will not go with us. If your presence will not go with us, there is no need for us to even venture to take a step. We can't even afford it. <laughs> you see that? For us to be able to make it in our Christian journey, to be in His presence, to be covered with His glory, simple thing, Mary has the key. Do whatever He tells you. Let me tell you, and I need to repeat myself to make it clear tonight. Listen, that scripture of John chapter 2 verse 5 that says, do whatever He tells you, was not even the, the voice of Jesus speaking. This was the voice of the mother. Speaking to the church. Speaking to believers. Okay? Speaking to me. We need to personalize it. Speaking to all of us. <laughs> okay? God is talking to us tonight. So if we do not do what He tells us to do, we cannot have his glory upon us we cannot have his presence upon us you see, I was I was talking about Jonah that day uh, you see Jonah was sent to Nineveh the glory of God was with him to accomplish and to lead him in that mission to accomplish the task and to lead him to his his mission to Nineveh but guess what Jonah began to travel to a different place Tashish the presence of the Lord was not with him. And when the presence of the Lord is not with us on a journey, eh, when we are on our own journey, not on the journey of the Lord, when his presence is not with us, crisis. Do you not see that there was a crisis in the life of Jonah? There was a crisis in the boat, in the ship. Every storm came. That was crisis. Jonah did not listen to God. He did not do what God told him to do. If he had, he wouldn't have even gone to Tashish. He would have gone to Nineveh. He wouldn't have had that, that storm. Sure, granted that God can send you on a mission and the storm can arise. But even in that case, God will give you victory. God will see you through. My dear friends of Christ, God is talking to us tonight. Okay? He speaks to us. Just as He spoke to His servants 2,000 years ago. Yes, you heard me very well. Jesus does speak to us today. In fact, every day. Many years ago, I came across a book with an interesting title. 
does God still speak? Does God still speak? Okay. <laughs> you see, God does speak. He does speak to us every day. But the way and manner that he chooses to speak to us may not be what we expect. So, our blessed mother, the mother of Jesus, wants to talk to us on the way that God speaks, the way that his son speaks, so that when he speaks to us, we will be able to know it was him, and then do whatever he tells us to do. And of course, he will be there with us to help us to do whatever he tells us to do. Okay? <laughs> you see, my dear friends, God speaks to us personally. Personally. You remember? We are dealing with how does God speak? How does the son of Mary speak? Number one, he speaks to us personally. Look at what the scripture says. Actually, what Mary said and says too, because she's saying something. Do whatever he tells you. That is, whatever he tells you, do it. Whatever. Whatever. I like that word. Whatever. Whatever. Wow. He speaks personally to the servants. To his servants today. He speaks. In the time of this event at Cana, Jesus spoke not to the crowd not even to the bride and bridegroom that that invited him and the mother no he spoke to the servants those who were scooping the wine and dishing it out to the people the servants in occasion he spoke personally to them. You see, we need to understand that God is interested in revealing himself personally, personally. He wants to talk to us personally so that we could say, yes, I have heard him. I have heard him. If our Christianity is at the level that they say that God spoke, and they have never had, you, you cannot be convinced that this is what God is talking to you personally. Something is wrong. It pleases Jesus to find his way into our hearts, personally. The way they came to Mary, she treasured them personally, personally. She treasured them in her heart. Not in their heart. Jesus spoke to the servants personally. They heard him. All of you were busy drinking, gisting, dancing, eating, doing all sorts of things. But while this is we are taking place, while friends we are talking and uh, doing all sorts of things, Jesus was speaking to some people personally. Okay? Jesus is interested in speaking to people. Even in a crowd, he wants to talk to us personally. Personally. Look at the case of the, the man who was um, born lame, who was lame for 38 years. 
uh, who, are, who, came, who are dumped at the pool of Bethesda. At the pool of Bethesda, if you read the account of John chapter 4, uh, sorry, chapter 5, you see that, that so many people were always at that uh, pool of Bethesda. So when Jesus came, he saw so many crowds, so many people there. But he went straight to one person. He spoke to one person. Personally. The man who was lying on the mat, who was lame. Jesus came, went straight to him, spoke to him personally. The crowd was busy carrying rumor. Oh, somebody said that Jesus came here. Oh, is it true? Oh, no, 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 it's not true. Oh, so they were just talking, making noise. But salvation came. And they didn't even get a weed of it. They didn't even hear his voice. But he spoke to one man. Someone. Maybe this message that's going on, Jesus is talking to you personally. I don't think it's maybe. It is. Jesus speaking to you. Is Jesus, Jesus speaking to me. You see that? In the messages that is being given, Jesus is speaking to our hearts. He spoke personally to the servant. You see? <laughs> but the guests did not know what he said. They didn't even hear him. They were busy listening to their friends, listening to their fellow human beings. But the very one whose word is the word of life was there speaking to his servant. Jesus speaks to his servant. Are you a servant of Jesus? Like Mary, are you a servant of Jesus? Servants of Jesus, they, they give Jesus listening ears. Jesus speaks to us the same way today, personally. He comes to speak to us even in dreams and in visions. He speaks. He speaks. <laughs> Help, Jesus. And so our blessed mother wants us as we go through the year to have a quality time with her son. To pour our hearts to him. To make a prayer. That's acceptable to him and to hear him speak to us personally. Personally. That means that we don't have to give room for distraction this year. Mary never gave room for distraction in her life. Don't forget that she was living with Jesus. Every time she will see Jesus. Jesus sleeping, Jesus waking up. Jesus eating, Jesus uh, uh, helping the father in the, in the workshop. I mean, it, Jesus was always there. She, she was always seeing Jesus. She was always hearing his, his voice. You know why? Because she was always in his presence. <laughs> always, not sometimes. Mary was always in his presence. So when Jesus was was, uh, uh, when Jesus spoke, she heard. So, in this number one way that Jesus speaks to us, Mary is saying he speaks to us personally. And we have to communicate. Communicate meaning that when he speaks, we should be able to hear. That's communication. If he speaks and we don't hear, we don't perceive it. We don't receive it. That's not communication. Number two. Jesus speaks to us authoritatively. If you look at Luke chapter, uh, Luke chapter 6 verse uh, 46. Okay? And Jesus says in Luke chapter 6, 
verse 46, he said, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, but you don't do what I say? And now, if Jesus is our Lord, then he will, of course, be the Lord of our lives, right? He will speak to us as a Lord, as a Lord. That is, laws, they have authority. So Jesus will speak to us authoritatively. Okay? <laughs> you see that? If he is Lord, then it is his sovereign right to dictate in our lives what he wants. And what he says should be the final thing. If we know him as Lord, why do we question what he says? Nobody questions his, the Lord. His Lord. Nobody. Then we question Jesus. We question him. We go and we call him dream prayer. Then he comes to him, we begin to begin to question him. For what he says is invested with all the authority of what he he is and for who he is. Number three. Jesus speaks to us comprehensively. Take note of this word, whatever. 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 Okay? John chapter 2, verse 5. Whatever he tells you. Whatever. No boundaries. No matter the situation, whatever he tells you, he speaks to us about little details, little things, and as well as big problems of life. Whatever. <laughs> okay? Many will tell you, look, whatever thing he tells you about the wine that ran short, all that things about life, whatever he tells you, just listen to him. Whatever. Okay? Whether he is talking to you about the problem in the office, or about problem in the family, or problem in, in your health, listen to him. Do whatever he tells you to do. He knows what to do. Whatever. Are you getting it? Whatever. So, when you are coming to him, whatever is the situation, bring it to him. And whatever he tells us, we ought to do it. Whatever. Whatever. <laughs> Even if our wine is running short, whatever. I mean, maybe... Your joy is running out. Your business is running out. Your career is running out. Okay? Your marriage is running out. Okay. Whatever it is, bring it to him. And whatever he tells you, do it. He's talking to me. I hope he does to you. Are you listening? Mary says, listen to the message. Listen. Do whatever he tells you. <laughs> oh. In fact, the earlier we see this word, the whatever, and they see that Jesus is very ready to address any situation we are going through, whatever is the situation. That he is able to deal with it, the better for us. No matter the detail that is involved in that situation, Jesus knows what to do. And because Mary knows her son so well, she is telling us, do whatever he tells you to do. Whatever. Okay? There, there is no detail that he cannot understand or that he does not know. There is no detail connected with our lives about which he does not speak to us. 
He does. Even the ones we don't even know. He does speak about them. Look at the, in the stations of the cross, the case of uh, Jesus meeting the, the, the women of Jerusalem. And they were, they were heartbroken seeing the injustice done on Jesus. When Jesus saw them, Jesus did not, did not tell them, yes, 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 you, you, your cry is, is justified because you are crying for me. But Jesus was more interested in something that, that they needed to know, to do, to deal with, to address in prayer, to seek the face of God. And they're not doing it. And he begins to talk to them. To pray for your children. To pray for Jerusalem. Whatever. We come to him with tears. Maybe of personal problems. But Jesus is telling us that there's a, a, something more serious to deal with. And he gives it to us as prayer points. Whatever. Whatever is boundless. Whatever is a word that shows boundless. You know, whatever. Does it, it doesn't mean one or two things. There's no end to it. Bring the problems. And there's not no limit to what you can tell us about how to address the problems. Okay? That is the mighty Jesus. Number four. Jesus can speak to us through other people. Yes, you heard me very well. You see, we often think that we need to be in the church before we, we hear God talking to us, or maybe uh, we need to come to the prayer line first before we hear God talk to us. But uh, I tell you, God can speak to us through others. Okay? He can speak to us through other people. Through their voices. He can even speak to us through non-living things. So let us not limit him to use other people to talk to us. He can he can talk to us even using non-living things. He can use a stone to talk to us. And this is not an exaggeration. He can use a tree to talk to us. He can use the weather. God can speak to you through the weather. If we are in tune with what he is speaking, I tell the message will be communicated. He can speak to us through signs, even through some certain feelings. But when I say feelings, I, I need to explain that so that not when you feel like, ah, oh, that God is another God. You say, no, I don't know. God. Maybe this. no. You have to put it in prayer. You have to understand how God speaks to you. And this is a very, very sensitive area. When I when I mention feelings, is is a very sensitive area because I hear people say, oh, I have a feeling. Um, of uh, not to do this or not to do that. No, as Christians, as Christians, we don't live by feelings. We lead, we live by the leadership of the Holy Spirit. But that's what the church calls signal grace. Signal grace. That's actually the better word to use. Not um, you know, Holy Spirit can minister to you, and you have a certain. It, it's difficult to explain this unless you have that gift and uh, and uh, you know this is the way God talks to you. For example, many years ago, I used to be walking on the road, you know, dressed up, maybe going to class or doing, going to do so, or going heading for an, an appointment, and all of a sudden, something like a wind will blow. Everywhere we still, there's no wind actually blowing, but I feel like a wind, and the sleep will come into my eyes. I'll be feeling so sleepy. This is the man walking on the road. This is the man who slept in the night. I'll be feeling so, so sleepy. So, the sleep was so strong. I'm not that kind of person that even, in fact, when I lie on the bed, it takes me some time to even before I sleep. <laughs> you know? So, but, but 
But how do I be parents that have walked on the road and sleep comes so strongly? Even when I minister and finish very late in the night, most of the time when I finish the prayer line, I'm, I will still be with people. Praying for people and doing all that. So how do you explain that I'll be on the road to, to walking, going for an appointment, and the sleep was so strong that I wouldn't continue. That it would overpower me. It took me time to know it was God talking to me, trying to talk to me, trying to get my attention. And one day the thing overpowered me and I couldn't help it. I jumped into a nearby CKC, Christ the King Kali Church. I just entered there and and the, and the sat on the pew. I said, Lord, I'm I'm going for an appointment, but I do, I do but but this I don't know what's going on, please. I was just sleeping, God opened my eyes and I saw a very powerful vision. A vision that saved the life of my father. And God told me, Look, there is a conspiracy in the spiritual realm to take his life. He just revealed it was so clear. He was speaking from heaven. Very clear. And he told me what to do. Gave me formula for fasting, prayers, and how to do it. Three days. He just made it easy for me. Just told me, do this, do this, do this. The moment the, the, the message finished, the whole sleep disappeared. And I tell you, <laughs> I did that fasting. And uh, immediately after that fasting, my father was attacked by armed robbers. But did not even scratch him. But you need to see what they did to people there. If you see what they did to people there, and this man they could not touch him, you think that maybe, maybe it's my father that sent those people. He couldn't touch him. Because in the spiritual realm, the problem had been arrested. But look at the way God communicated that to me. Sleep. Okay? And many other examples of him using that pattern to communicate with you. So whenever I feel that, that strong wind, hmm, I just go to somewhere quiet and he will speak to me. So he can speak to you through signs. Okay? Through signal graces. Through the events that happen around, around you. There are so many ways he speaks to us. I'm telling you. <laughs> A lady was heading to the airport and, uh, and told the, the, the taxi man, please, please, I uh, don't want to miss the flight. Just speed to the maximum. Break the speed limit. I can't afford to miss this, this, this meeting. You know, I can't afford to miss it. And the man was speeding. All of a sudden, the tire busted. This woman was like, <laughs> "Oh my goodness, why, why would you come here? You know what? Emma began to blame the man. It was not funny for for her though. The man was, you know, doing his best to fix the, the to put the spare tire, and uh, but I'm sure he could finish this. You know, he tried his best, but the flight was missed. And this lady was very, very angry with the, with the driver. If this did not happen, there's no way I would have missed this flight. But guess what? That flight never landed till today. And you know what that means. It fell down. And everybody died. And she began to look for the, the contact information of that, that driver. Now, she now calls him the man that God used to save my life. God speaks through, a, through events. If we are in tune, I tell you, we get it. We get it. Okay. I was talking with a, a young man who was going for uh, marriage, uh, you know, heading to go and uh, be... Um, seek the hand of a lady uh, 
a marriage and 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 uh, God had warned him this is not your wife God had warned him in dreams God was talking to him but he closed his eyes and then the day he was he, he was he was not heading carrying his Mercedes car and was heading just as he was entering the the, the compound of the, of, the, of the family of the girl the, the a big branch of tree broke and smashed his bonnet and yet he closed his eyes and put her head and say, marry that girl. Since my life, I've never heard that a girl fought on her wedding day while wearing her wedding garment. I've never heard that in my, in my life until his story. That was how aggressive that what the woman he married was. <laughs> on the day of wedding why is she wearing the wedding the 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 wedding garment she fought with the mother-in-law and it has not been well without marriage until it came to an end the divorce before his eyes cleared he now discovered that this lady was in a cult group Okay, but God was speaking to him. Don't go. I could give so many examples on this, but you see, our blessed mother does not want us to go through the year dumb, insensitive to divine signals. Okay, she wants us. To know what her son is saying. And to do it. And to do what? To do it. We need to. <laughs> so, when the church talks about signal graces, we need to understand that these are what we need such subtle signals that God is in science. Okay, God is in to speak to us that He has heard our prayers. Like a signpost, like a flag that whispers in our ear, this is the way. Walk this path. Signal graces. Okay. <laughs> the, the, the exact definition of signal graces uh, cannot be found in um, in the in the catechism per se. You know, is not really defined explicitly. But but you know, we all, we know that God can speak to us through signal graces. Look at John the Baptist; he was baptizing, but now. He saw someone coming for baptism. And that was Christ. How did he know? God only told him the sign. A dove will blow over him. And John saw it. There are so many Johns who don't see their own dove. That is meant to tell you, look at who he is. Look at what to do. Look at the direction to take. God gives us signal graces to prepare us for the new phase in life. And, uh, like I said before, it usually comes as subtle hints to guide us on the right path. Okay? Signal graces will keep us in the right direction. And also build, build up our trust and faith in the Lord. But, you see, we need to develop the gift. We need to develop it. Very important. And our blessed mother wants to help us to develop it. To develop it. <laughs> if you develop it, if an evil person is around you, you just know. You just pick it. It's like an antenna. You just pick it. People don't understand why 
you you are becoming you know uh, you are taking caution or precaution concern concern somebody but you have been communicated Mary wants us to have this deeper connection with God. It is his word. Deeper connection with the word of God. So that when he is speaking, his words will not fall on the ground. Look at um, uh, Samuel, for example. Okay? Samuel heard the word of God. God spoke to him personally. You see that? But don't forget, Eli was there in the same house, but God did not speak to him. But God used Eli as an instrument to direct Samuel to hear the God. You know, in a better way. He, to understand what God is saying. To know it was God. Because he didn't even know it was God speaking. Now, what Mary is now doing is, she is taking a position of ally to direct us. So that we hear the word of God. And know this is the word of God. And do it! She is our mentor. <laughs> our patroness. Our protectress. That this is the, this great woman I'm talking about. Okay. <laughs> she would mentor us better than Eli mentored somewhere. God speaks through others. You see, God spoke to to Samuel through a lie. God can speak to you to speak to me. I tell my intercessor, I said, look, when I was, when I commissioned them the first time, I tell them, look, don't think that because God used me to start this ministry, he will speak to me, to, he will use me to talk to you all the time. No! He said, God can use you to talk to me. God can use a small baby to speak. I have an experience I can never forget when my baby was a small, uh, uh, my child was a small baby then, and, uh, and I was asking God for to speak to me on a particular subject i needed his answer and i was praying and praying and praying and uh, my baby who just fell forward and and, the, and the, the, the the mouth was in a particular part of portion of the bible because the bible was open and uh, the baby was sitting uh, and, the, and the mother back uh, my wife back 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 the baby uh, and immediately i heard a, a, a tiny voice that told me check where the mouth is the moment i checked out exactly what god wanted me to do God can speak to anybody. And when we understand these things, we'll be able to go through the year hearing God. That is what this woman, the mother of Jesus, that tells us, do whatever he tells, he tells you to do. Okay? Let us do it. Just do it, because Jesus said it. Do it. <laughs> You remember Galatians 1 verse 16, right? To reveal his son in me, so that I might preach him among the Gentiles. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. This was poor writing. My immediate response was not to consult any human being. But what was the situation? He did not want to consult any human being. I, in fact, in verse 17, he says, I did not go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was, but I went to Arabia. Let I return to Damascus. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. All right? Then after three, three years, I went up to Jerusalem to, to get acquainted with Scaphas and stayed with him. Fifteen days. He ran away, but he came back. <laughs> Is it? I saw none of the other apostles, only James and the lost brother. My dear friends in Christ. While we must recognize the principle 
stated in Genesis in Galatians 1 verse 16, we must also recognize that the Lord often guides us through the counsel of other Christians. And God can choose to do it in the way that it pleases him, like in the case of Paul. Okay. But number five, God speaks to us provi providentially. Okay. This is what I mean by this. Like God is speaking through the daily happenings and the circumstances of life, of our life. You know, sometimes the door will close. You don't know that that door has to close so that another one will open. And you are crying because the door closed. <laughs> God can speak to us in the circumstances of life. Circumstances of life. Circumstances of life. He can speak to us through them. And if we don't understand, we will we'll be heartbroken thinking that the Lord is mean on us. But you don't know that the Lord is packaging something better. Packaging something better. Someone the other day, some years ago, a, a man who, who was targeting a very high position in his company. So he asked me to pray. And he, he was always disturbing me to keep praying. He already put application for the position. He had worked in the company for some years. But he was aiming that position. Now the opportunity has come. Uh, but uh, it, it was not, the fire was not moving. So we kept praying, we kept praying. You know, God didn't tell me anything. So we kept praying. All right? Then, uh, one day his boss told, called him and said, you know what, I've given the recommendation on your file, so I've submitted it to the higher authority. So he went to the, to the people, the, the board, uh, who would sit on the, on the file and approve it. And he, 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 he got there and got stuck. Prayed and prayed and prayed, nothing was moving. Guess what? Just not too long after that, the, there was a major change in the company. A, a bigger company bought that company, and there was a, a lot of restructuring that took place. And they decided to, to terminate the appointments of everybody in the higher management position, starting from the position he, he would have been promoted to. In other words, he would have lost his appointment. As I'm talking to you, that is where he's still working to today. <laughs> okay? This happened uh, about, five, uh, about six years ago. He's still working there today. You see? The way God speaks, the way he talks to us, the miracles that he does that we don't even know, it's amazing. And our blessed mother wants us to hear him. Okay? He can speak to us through what we go through in life. Really. I tell you, the situations we go through in life, God speaks to us through them. He makes us better Christians through those situations. Okay? He even speaks to us through what we read, what we hear, what we see. And if we are listening, I tell you, we will not fail to hear his voice. We will not. Now, another way that God speaks to us is he speaks to us through his word. That is even, the, that is even the, 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 top, the top of it. His word. God speaks to us through his word. 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 In fact, that is one of the most common ways he speaks to us today is word, the Bible, the scripture. Okay? The word of God is life. The Bible has life. The life of God. The word of God is life. Okay? But you see all those newspapers? You see all those books in the library? Oh my goodness. They don't have life. There is no spirit and life in those books in the library. Publish a, a 400 page book in engineering. I tell you, there's no life there. 
What it is just intellectual exercise, intellectual knowledge. But not life, not life of God. Not life of God. The only book in the whole wide world that has the life of God in it, that carries the power of God in it, is what? The Bible. Okay? <laughs> we, we, we learn of uh, Shakespeare, a great writer in his time. Of course, uh, it, it, the history proof says that no one had ever equaled his mastery in writing. Okay? Great literature. It has a good literal scale. But I tell you, there's no life in writings. Great poets, oh, marvelously. Great novelists, oh, marvelous. But then, they have no life. Their books, their articles, their works have no life. Only the scripture of Jesus has life. And so the Lord supremely speaks to us in and through his Word. Okay? And anything which we feel to be his voice to us, which is contrary to his word, is certainly not his voice. Somebody comes to tell you what looks so godly, like God is speaking, but it does not line up with the scripture. Today I'm telling you that is a fake person. Okay? So, we must be very conversant with the Word of God. Go through the year with the Word of God. That is the life of Mary. That's what she's advocating. This is a wonderful woman of the Word. A woman of the Word. And that's what she is. The Queen of the Word. The Word of God. You, you cannot separate Mary from the Word of God. And banana. You can do that. How can you? Can you separate? Uh, you can't separate it. You can, you can, you, the, the, think of the, the, the molecules of the water. You can't even... I mean, you cannot separate her from her son. From the water of her son. That's her very nature. So, she is saying, I want you to know the word of my son. Go through the year loving the word of my son. That's what she wants. That's what she wants. That's what she's teaching. Let us do so. <laughs> it pleases her when her children listen to the word of God and do what he says. Okay? Now think of it this way. You see, when Mary tells us, do whatever he tells you. Now, Invariably, she wants us to go to the scripture. Because Jesus tells us something in the scripture. So we open the scripture. So when we take up the scripture and begin to read the scripture, then the spirit of her son begins to talk to us, minister to us. And Mary is saying now, what that spirit is saying, that my son is saying it. Listen to him. Do whatever he says. Do whatever he tells you in the scripture. If, if somebody calls himself a child of God, but... He does not have time for scripture. That person is weak. I agree he's a child of God, but he's weak. Very weak. Even a little wind will blow him away. Okay? <laughs> so when we become conversant with the word of God, and the spirit that is in the word of God begins to speak to us, then we begin to under the unction of grace absorb the word of God and the spirit begins to direct us reveal things to us mysteries to us that was the secret of the first century church they were rooted in the ministry of the Holy Spirit. In sharing of the word, in, in breaking of the bread, in fellowship, in their deliverance missions, in evangelism, 
Everything was done in partnership with the Holy Spirit. So yes, the Lord speaks to us today. That's what Mary is saying. And I believe her, do you? The Lord speaks to us today. Just as definitely as he did to the servants at the marriage feast of Cana in Galilee. And all that we have learned this message through the office of our Blessed Mother is to listen to her son. Let us pray. Holy Mother, we thank you for today's message. For talking to us, to listen to your son, to do whatever your son tells us to do. We thank you. We thank you for being there for us, to help us, to lead us to Jesus, that we may see him and interact with him and talk to him and embrace him. Thank you, Blessed Mother. That no matter the situations we go through, we know that when we do whatever he tells us to do, we shall laugh in a big way at last. There shall be honor for those who do whatever your son says. Even your son tells us in Luke 11 verse 28, the blessed are those who listen to the word of God and do what he says. May we be those people. May we be blessed. Obtain for us the grace to listen to the word of your son. Obtain for us the grace, the grace, the grace to do whatever he tells us to do. How difficult it is. How impossible it is to do it based on human effort. Impossible. But we know that with God, Matthew 19, verse 26, all things are possible. Intercede for us, O Blessed Mother, that we may obtain the grace you have to listen to the Word of God and to do whatever He tells us to do. Intercede for us, Blessed Mother. We need you, Blessed Mother. Our wine is running out. In most families, wine is running out. Embarrassment is almost at the door. But Blessed Mother, step in and save such situations. Even as the servants did what Jesus told them to do, and the embarrassment, the shame, the reproach were taken away from the wedding. So, Blessed Mother, help us, help us, help us, help us, Mama, to listen to your son, to do whatever he wants us to do, to bring our empty pots of wine, empty pots to, to him, trusting that he will do a miracle to turn this around. Mama, intercede for us. Oh, Jesus. Mama, we need you. Your word to Jesus. They have no wine. Displays a compassionate concern you had for your children. Mama, tell him again, even now, concern our families. Tell him they have no wine. And Jesus knows what to do, blessed mom. We need you. We need you, blessed mom. Do not allow our pots, the wine in our pots, to run dry this year. Let the wine of prayer 
remain with us, Blessed Mother. Oh, Jesus. Even as your son seemingly appeared to have no concern to you based on his response, woman, what is, what is your concern about this? Yet, you responded with peaceful confidence that he will grant his unspoken request. I mean, your unspoken request. So, we thank you. Thank you. Teach us how to have confidence in your son. Blessed Mother, may we go through the year in the abundance of wine that your son provides. And let it be the best of wine, of course. Not our own wine, but his own wine. Thank you, Blessed Mother. Help us in everything we do to glorify your son. Let the peace that comes from him remain upon us. Hail, Holy Queen. We pray to you for the courage to bring our needs and the needs of others to God and to peacefully accept what God has planned for us. These are many more we pray through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now, till our Father. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are you amongst men, and blessed is the fruit of your womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us in us now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Over the, the prayer word of Jesus. And we'll hand over the message to the hand of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.